And hello, Illinois Valley. Welcome to the Illinois Valley or Community Broadcast. Uh, this is your host, Ernest of Gaia. Um, this broadcast is sponsored by Ernest Goes to Blockchain, which is a project, permaculture project effort uh, to kind of just help folks simplify their adoption of useful and appropriate technologies via permaculture design. So if you or your organization would like any help putting together online um, collaborative discussions or uh, whatnot, feel free to get in touch with me and uh, hopefully I can help you out. That being said, let me get started with today's broadcast. I'm going to briefly go through some things I found in Twitter, a couple important interesting sites, also the ArcGIS uh, map, a resource map that's an uh, open source project that's being developed uh, with global researchers. Also, go over some of the some pretty cool posts in the local um, Cave Junction Facebook groups, uh, as well as a very important Rogue Action Center update. And on YouTube, I'm going to share with folks uh, one of the first permaculture videos that I ever saw, which is actually preparing for an uncertain future. And it's really been this, this, and probably like two other videos has really been uh, the the template that's guided me over like the last decade. Um, also, a couple interesting things on YouTube from Josephine County. They've had several updates today or meetings, and uh, just a couple other links and something to share for folks that are crafty. So if you're a crafty for crafty person, make sure you stay to the end. With that, let's get started. So long story short, okay. Hopefully you're not out of toilet paper because you have a cat, right? I think if you've had a cat, you've been in this situation before. And again, this is one of the reasons why I love turning to Twitter. Um, so I had to share that with y'all. <laughs> um, another interesting thing that I came across, not too much local news over Twitter, of course, mostly state news, much more local news over Facebook, and a good mix of both on YouTube. But the Lenfest Ocean program, which I believe is a part of Oregon State University, I could be wrong, um, but they are having, a, on March 30th, a virtual pa uh, panel to discuss the cl um, climate-driven shifts in fisheries on the east and west coast, essentially. So, might be fun. Check it out. I'll have links to everything I show here in the description of this video, so make sure that you check that out. So, one of the other posts that I found coming across Twitter from the Oregon Live website is that next week, Oregon lawmakers will likely hold a special session on the coronavirus relief next week. Of course, we know most of the control and decision making is done on the state level and that the administration is essentially trying to coordinate federal resources to help states um, with the logistics that the president has, especially with the military, National Guard, and that Senate and Congress are doing what they do, which is uh, write all kinds of bills and pass laws. And so it'll take a little bit longer, I think, for 
a, a lot of certainty to kind of develop locally, especially depending on where you are. And of course, Oregon isn't one of the hot spots. However, we are uh, right in the middle of a couple hot spots. So this link is in the description. Um, also, if you are looking for information from the state as far as employment or medical information, is the state has been very good at updating their websites and providing information. It is a lot, but it is here and it is available. Um, your county should also have uh, information fo for us coming out soon, as in particular, like where in the counties things will be available. So that will be interesting as it unfolds. Um, but mo mostly on Twitter, it's memes. Um, and <laughs> lots of people having fun. Uh, remember the Oregon lockdown hashtag, if you're looking for memes, is the one you want to find. So one of the cool um, global open source projects that has kind of popped up is the Ursi ArcGIS hub. <clears throat> and they have lots of data. Um, lots of maps. They are now producing maps down to this resolution of counties. So we can actually, with a, a kind of a low res Google Earth, so, whoa, we can. Do, do, do. Go right on down here to Josephine County. Click on that dot, and here we get the information that's currently available when it was last updated, which was a little over an hour ago when I'm making this video. It tells us how many in Josephine County have been confirmed and deaths. Um, do, do, do. So, Check that out. This should be interesting as it develops. And of course we can see, it's kind of hard to see, but we can really see a spread across the state coming down from Seattle, Olympia, Portland, Salem, down the five. <laughs> and that there's also been, you know, kind of a spread eastward uh, across the the corridor there. Um, doo -doo -doo. So that's pretty much been like the best map that I've found. And to my knowledge, it has the most amount of people uh, across the globe working on it to provide as real time data as possible. <clears throat> So now for our Facebook segment, um, really, really interesting post here. So um, mm -hmm. there's a post of some folks, and this isn't the only post. There's an awesome place in CJ uh, that is making um, kind of personal masks. But apparently there is a support group to make masks, protective gear, potentially um, ventilators. And this group has gotten together with folks in need of this equipment. And Brad, who shared this post from that group, who I'm assuming is in the group, uh, posted a status update for that group, you know, and says that they have status update. We're up to 65 plus experts, mostly from Southern Oregon. And we have designed prototypes for most of the pressing needs of local hospital system has. 3D printers are firing up. The local manufacturers are preparing for injection molds. 
and over 500 seamstresses are ramping up to provide gear to our hospitals and the community. The full force of Southern Oregon geeks, nerds, and doctors aren't cowering in our homes waiting for this to blow over. We're fighting back. So I want to know more about this. I would love to get an interview with Brad and others. Um, yeah, this is awesome. So check that out. Link is in the description. And Facebook, Twitter is not the only place for memes. We have plenty in Facebook as well. As you probably already know, um, there's also very good information um, being posted, this in particular for folks in the Three Rivers School District. So make sure you're in there and check that out if you need it. Uh, also, eggs. So egg prices, if they haven't already, may be going up in the store, or you may have noticed that some of the bigger stores are actually out of eggs. So one of the, so this is awesome that folks are posting in these groups about eggs for sale and uh, you know highly recommend eggs right now. They're great. This this perfect time of year for them. <clears throat> and from Rogue River, we have the uh, 90 day eviction moratorium declared. Ninety-day moratorium on residential evictions due to inability to pay in light of the COVID-19 crisis. So this is the one of the important things: is that any adjustment to your life, if you try to get unemployment, or if they start helicopter dropping debit cards in our community, um, essentially. <clears throat> If you're a business owner and um, you go to get a loan or some type of grant to like recoup some of the expenses that you've had during this event, um, it's really important for you to keep track of your expenses, especially if you can relate them directly to an adjustment in your behavior that you've had to make due to the coronavirus. So if you would like to pay your employees to learn and develop online skills and invest in your employees and, you know, work together with them, then this is an expense that should be covered in some of the money coming from the federal and state government. And, this will actually put your business and your employees in a better position to kind of adjust after uh, this event happens. So please stay engaged with your employees. Think about the opportunities that you may have as a business owner. And thank you, Rogue River, for making sure that people aren't going to get thrown out. However, I did see in a group post, and this is unconfirmed, but the Cave Junction or Illinois Valley Housing Authority may have increased its rent on some of its renters. Um, this is, again, something I, I have not been able to confirm, and the post left no resources to confirm it. So I'll keep an eye on it let you know if I find anything. So one of the first, whoa, one of the first permaculture videos that I ever watched was this uh, lecture by Peter Bain, uh, preparing for an uncertain future. And it basically goes over in priority, the kind of things that one can do and how they can apply permaculture design in their life in order to 
uh, prepare for the future, right? And this is something that you do all the time so that when you're in situations like this, you can uh, reap the benefits of storing food, you know, being intentional with your spaces, acquiring useful tools and skills. Um, but this <clears throat> stay at home uh, event is also an opportunity for, and the fact that it happened at this time of year, it's probably a good thing that it's not October right now or November after all the farmers markets. So this is a great video. It's really uh, simple and easy and uh, there's helps people develop a plan for their family or their businesses um, and their community, right? The network of community groups and members uh, that are around here. Another group, Tech Oregon, that is helping kind of uh, helping to open the space for discussions about what happens during business disruptions, uh, particularly like what we're dealing with uh, today. Um, and panelist Amy Hoyt, uh, I, these gals did a great job in this, um, this interview, the, the beginning starts off pretty kind of formal, but once they get into the questions and stuff, uh, the perspective these ladies have is just awesome. Um, but panelist Amy Hoyt, who led pandemic planning for global consumer facing organizations and Denise, Denise Bard, uh, is a global director of security for the Bill and Melinda Gates foundation. Um, we're both senior associates at point B outline steps that folks can take to help their businesses recover from disasters and helps kind of shape some perspectives so folks can identify the and and manage the business aspects for something like this and they also go over some great kind of tips on how to just focus and how to create an outline and you know how to kind of avoid some lost revenue so pretty cool little video um they definitely have some experience and insight for sure and the josephine county board of commissioners uh had some technical difficulties today however they did have um two or three meetings they basically have this one meeting split up between two videos and then i'm not sure what this last video is um, that actually just came out a little while ago when I started preparing for this video. Um, but some pretty cool, uh, they're pretty, I don't know, a couple interesting things. One is that, you know, they're going through their procedures and essentially, you know, preparing for what's going to come about the next couple weeks. Um, and so they're one of the things is kind of, um, you know, they, somebody proposed or one of the other counties proposed a kind of like memorandum of a uh, memorandum of understanding of kind of, you know, compassionate assistance from County to County. If the need arises during this crisis, um, with no obligation to do anything, but just that kind of um, understanding that, you know, five Jackson and Josephine County and three other close by counties um, will just have an agreement together and be able to coordinate so that if the fire department over here needs to go over there, that, you know, there's no 
jurisdictional, you know, things that will slow them down. And Josephine County commissioners were pretty much on board with that. It sounds like we already have like a longstanding agree agreement with one, if not two, of the other counties near us. So this isn't a a new thing. And um, they also uh, are starting to do some upgrades on their radio towers and started the process on that and also made sure that they weren't approving any work you know to like all of a sudden somebody puts up a bunch of 5g and everything's retrofitted uh, they have some concerns from community members about that and such a thing and so they just they uh, <laughs> kind of clarified that as well as some other things in the meeting so actually not not a bad meeting um kind of cool seeing what they go over when they're getting stuff done so i totally recommend subscribing to that channel or knowing somebody who does um and if you watch that josephine county and you need a little pick me up i totally recommend this five minute uh, video clip, or uh, almost five minute video clip from Lee Camp of Redacted Tonight. We should have seen this collapse coming. He very simply explains um, our GDP using the Cookie Monster and Elbow Elmo as kind of. Uh, a description of our economy. So highly recommend this quick little video. Um, it's hilarious and and so true. So true. Uh, on a a kind of well-being side of things, um, there was a discussion uh, today, or actually this was a couple days ago with folks uh, from the Post Carbon Institute um, called Staying Sane in the Time of CB, Leslie Davenport on Mental and Emotional Well-Being. Uh, one of the things that you definitely see on Facebook and Twitter is that there definitely are people um, and just talking to people that are six feet away out in public. Um, Definitely a wide range of emotions right now, and definitely um, new constraints on space and boundaries. And so, yeah, if you're feeling a little stressed, you know, uh, check out this video. I might watch it tonight. Um, I do like what is published from the post Carmen Institute. So if you're feeling social isolation, this might be the video for you. Now, all right, this is the, the, the best part, best thing, maybe not the best thing. Um, but there are, if you are a crafty person, I totally want to recommend this site to you. It's called openbazaar.org. It is a peer-to-peer, -peer, permissionless uh, e-commerce website. It is real easy to set up on your computer and use from... Uh, it has your your typical kind of shopping cart system and items they actually have a lot of handcrafted items they have a built-in bitcoin wallet so that and folks know the usd value so that you can receive um you know bitcoin from your transactions and not be dependent too much on what happens on the stock market <laughs> um, 
and there's even a a, a dispute resolution um and an escrow service so that you're insured that when items are sent and payments sent that the payments held in escrow until it's confirmed by the person receiving it and all that stuff and if there's a resolution then payments held until the resolution is solved uh, so and it's peer-to-peer -peer so that you're not dependent on visa you're not dependent on mastercard not dependent on a bank since it's an e-commerce platform, it has inventory management, uh, includes your shipping options and everything. And <clears throat> they have a mobile app for your phone. And yeah, this is just totally recommended. I can kind of buy and sell freely. Zero platform fees. And like... Final thing, final thing. All right, the task force today. What did they talk about? What did President Trump talk about? So this is great. <clears throat> uh, one, today was mostly governors and other folks in authority with soldier uniforms on podiums. That's what today mostly was. Um, Trump had... A very short and concise task force update with like no time really for extra questions um not that the reporters make yeah actually they do do some good good questions sometimes um but they they could do better <laughs> um trump was very adamant about saving the cruise ships which is interesting um Cruise ships, to my knowledge, are mostly owned outside of the U.S. Uh, so that they don't have to pay taxes or anything like that and avoid labor laws. And that most people on the ships are not actually under U.S. labor jurisdiction. So it's really confusing why he, uh, he continues to mention... Um, <clears throat> the cruise ships and of course we would know from earlier interviews or press releases that he is trying to help out casinos as well um but one of the more uh <clears throat> i guess technical comments is direct cash payments um the question is you know, how will these direct cash payments be made to workers? <clears throat> and is this a couple of questions? Is there going to be surveillance attached to the, the cash payments? And <clears throat> is this going to be a direct digital payment from the Fed? Uh, and this is very important um, and very interesting if that's the way that it turns out. Um, this will be the first time that normal working class citizens would be able to actually have a financial account directly with the Fed um, or perhaps with a particular intermediary. So... We'll have to see about that. Of course, uh, the update was that they've increased testing, increased supplies. They've given out lots of numbers. Um, that is usually half of the questions from the reporters. So he really wanted to um, get those numbers out there. I don't have – I can't listen to all the governor's stuff. Um so I'm waiting to find out in Oregon if, you know, supplies are going to be available. Um, it also looks like we may be able to make our own supplies out here so that we may have enough time uh, to do that. Um, but numbers are good. He gave us more numbers. The stock market liked numbers. Um, and... 
yeah, you know, uh, track your expenses. Expenses are being covered. Um, and that's pretty much it for today's episode and community broadcast from the Illinois Valley. If you would like anything added to these videos, if you would like to share information from you, you would like to include information in these blog broadcasts, please get a hold of me on Twitter or better yet join the Illinois Valley Community Transition Telegram and share your information there and let me know if you would like to join the broadcast and we'll get it set up. So that being said, I hope everybody has a great day and an interesting and fun time. Can't wait for the sun to come back out.